I'm completely obsessed with doing 3D models of trees. But for those of you who want to get started, I'm going to show you how you can do it with nothing more than a smartphone that you carry in your pocket and an app, Polycam. We also need a tree. And this provides me with a great excuse to go on the Ancient Tree Inventories online map where you can search in your local area for ancient and veteran trees, get out amongst trees, go and have a look at them, and while you're there, do some scans. I found a really nice little cluster near me, so we're going to jump in the car, head over there now. So I'm no more than two minutes off the car park and I've come across the first tree that was recorded on the ancient tree inventory. This is a sessile oak. It's clearly been pollarded before. You can see just here, you've got several upright stems, really well established. And then you've got a few splintered, shattered ends. A lovely stub here from a previous limb failure. Nice woodpecker hole, lots of features going on, but pretty enclosed. I have noticed just over there, I've marked a few of these trees up. So there's a few self seeded silver birch and sycamore that I wonder if they've marked them up to do a bit of haloing. It really is such an honour and a privilege to spend time amongst trees like this. Now, before I get into this, I'm going to say that making 3D models of trees, doing photogrammetry of any sort of vegetation, or trees is extremely difficult and I'll explain why. So when we approach photogrammetry on a tree like this we really have to understand how difficult of a technique it is particularly when you have a lot of surrounding competing vegetation you've got objects in the way like this here all this vegetation essentially moves if you look up around you the trees next to me they are all swaying in the wind and that swaying and movement makes it really really difficult also changing light conditions by the time i've got round a tree of this size this girth the light will have changed several times all of a sudden it might be in light then it's in dappled light then it's in shade then it's overcast ever changing weather which means that your contrast that your areas that are exposed and overexposed like up here and this ever-changing shade if you look at the shade on the cambium on the bark here you'll see that it is constantly shimmering and moving now this difficulty becomes more apparent when you're trying to capture the finer details of the tree now every time i take a photo then i take another photo and another photo the photo is trying to stitch them together but all of a sudden this reference point here or this one here have moved even if it's a tiny little movement the software has a really difficult time processing the image so literally a stone's throw from the lapsed pollard sessile oak that you can see in the distance we have this fantastic tree just next to the path look at this huge pile of wood mold at the base this exposed and decaying central sort of column of heartwood bits of reaction amazing tree down here we've got some evidence of invertebrates exit holes bits of frass as well and standing back here you really get to take in how big this tree is still a really healthy crown you know for its age has quite a good leaf coverage it's not a great deal of lower crown framework forming so perhaps that's something to keep an eye on there is some established epicormic growth on this left hand side again really quite sheltered by all these other trees these sycamore and these birch starting to out compete the crown a little bit so one for them to think about managing in the future now when it comes to photogrammetry there's a really good reason why this tree is perhaps a little bit easier to scan than the lapsed pollard sessile oak we saw over there. The ground around this tree is far, far easier to work with. It's more open, there's less vegetation popping up like we saw the holly and the self-seeded sycamore on the lapsed pollard. And essentially, you can get really close to it. You can get all of the, the surfaces, you can get all of the angles, you can get various points, so you can create a lot of reference points for your model. 
One thing that makes it a little bit trickier is that it's actually hollow, which means you have to really take care and attention when you're taking all of your photographs. You want to make sure that you get inside the cavity, that you're getting various angles, that you're getting the, the inner face as well as the outer face, that you're getting plenty of overlap. So the first thing you want to do is grab your phone. And I've got one of these. And the reason I've got this is because it's always important to clean your lens. You'll get lots of little grease when you're using your phone day to day on here. So always carry something to give your lens a good clean with. And then you're going to open up Polycam and you are going to start snapping photos. Now what I'm going to say to you is make sure that you get plenty of overlap. Do not rush this process. You're going to take your time and essentially always use manual mode. Work yourself around the tree in a circle making sure you get plenty of overlap. What I like to do is also get various heights from the same point, then I'll move slightly. And you're gonna work your way all around the tree, making sure you get plenty of overlap. Now when I say overlap, you wanna be aiming for around 75% overlap. So on a tree like this, you'll notice that I am continually pressing the shutter button. So that little plus symbol, constantly firing it. And I'm getting different heights. And I'm also making sure that I've stopped moving my phone and my camera when I press the plus button. Because any parts that are out of focus or any little bits of shake, any vibration, it's always a good tip as well to turn your notifications off so you don't get emails pinging through. But just really, really take your time. Get all of the stem to start with. Again, different heights, making sure there's plenty of overlap, giving the software a fighting chance of having a load of reference points. Keep working your way around, just taking your time. At the moment, I'm up to 77 photos. On a tree like this, I would typically take between 250 and 300 photos. I'm gonna keep going round. And to start with, I'm making sure I'm stood quite far back because I want to get quite a bit of the context. Then if there's a certain feature, like on the other side when we get round there, that I'm mapping, you'll notice that I will get in closer and I'll start to move the camera. So rather than pointing straight on, I'll point down on top, I'll point around to the bottom, I'll get close up, I'll point to the side, I'll make sure I get sufficient detail. Now for any of you that have tried using Polycam or any of the 3D scanning apps really because they all work the same, the principle is the same, you'll have probably found that when it comes to scanning a complete tree, it never actually works. The only bit you can ever really capture is the stem. And there's a good reason for that. It's really difficult to capture the intricate details of a tree. Trees have lots of parts, they have leaves, they have laterals, they have sublaterals, they have tertiary branches. All of that fine structure is actually really hard to create a model of. Not only because it just moves around in the wind, it's never really static, but two, because you can never, from your vantage point, get the upper side of the leaf, the underside of the leaf, around all of the twig, around all of the bit that you're trying to create a 3D model of. So you'll see that I'm now really taking my time with these bits where there's a lot of detail. You know, give the software a fighting chance. If you just take a few photos, so if I took one here, then one there, then one there, then one there, there is just not enough reference points for the software. And like we've discussed before, the changing light conditions, you know, one minute it's cloudy, next minute the sun comes out and actually I've picked a really unfavorable day to make this video because the best lighting conditions are overcast conditions. You want it kind of gray really, uh, which we typically have in the UK, but I seem to have picked the only day where the sun's decided to make a bit of an appearance. And as you can see, in the minute that I've been talking to you, the light conditions have changed quite a lot. So I'm now gonna get inside this cavity. Oh, he says, falling down the hole, whoops. And I'm not just going to shove the camera straight in. If I shoved the camera in here, took a few photos, and then I moved on to this part, the software would really struggle to know how to map that area. So I'm also going to pull out, and I'm going to make sure 
that it knows what I'm trying to do. So it's also quite important to take your photos in some sort of order that you're going to upload them in. Now, a common problem here as well is often you'll find that people forget there is an underside. So you need to change your angle, you need to get lower. Now admittedly, if this was a paid commercial job, you wouldn't have this much time, but then how many jobs are you gonna be doing 3D models on, you know? Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. You know, what's the aim really? It's just another tool in your toolbox. That doesn't mean that every single tree in the world needs to be 3D modeled. Because also, the big question I have for people always is what are you gonna do with those 3D models? But really, ancient veteran trees is one of the best use cases, I would say. Because these trees aren't gonna be around forever and yeah, it'd be a shame to lose them. So if we can keep a digital archive of them, keep a digital record that future gener generations can enjoy, or even current generations, people that are here today that perhaps don't have access, can't get a wheelchair down here. This is an accessible bit of woodland. Maybe they want to enjoy these trees, see these trees up close and enjoy them. Well, for education purposes, I've got a 3D model. I can put it into a VR headset, brings the trees to the people. So I've just finished up. 331 pictures in total, which you can review if you want. But essentially what I do then is I just go on to done. And from here, I click upload later because this model is 502 megabytes. So upload later, leave it there. viewers may be able to see over there that there is quite a big oak tree in the distance there's no live growth on it at all but still such an important tree now in actual fact I've just looked on the ancient tree inventory and this isn't the tree that I thought we were looking for but it isn't recorded on the ancient tree inventory and that's for good reason I suppose a lot of people feel that you know, a dead tree like this serves very little value, but it absolutely does. The saprozylic habitat that that is providing to rare niche invertebrates and also providing that continuity, that like bridge habitat, whilst other trees, like the ones we've already looked at, sort of develop the features that the invertebrates and mammals and fungi can migrate onto those other trees. Now on the ATI you can record this, it's not a lost veteran because, or a lost ancient or veteran because it hasn't previously been recorded but I can record it as a remnant, so a stump and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just gingerly making my way over to this tree, I don't want to trample on anything too much, I don't want to disturb too much, this isn't a very well trodden part but I really want to show you this amazing habitat, it's an amazing resource. You know, saprozylic insects are some of the most threatened types of invertebrates across Europe. They really are highly specialized and rely on this decaying old heartwood found in trees. And without these trees, there's simply no habitat for them. I mean, look at these mosses here all the way down here and then here this wonderful wood mold and then this glorious moss here which I'm not sure what it is I'm not an expert in mosses or a botanist of any sort but that is fantastic look completely consumed this huge section of the tree that's collapsed so much life still depends on this and this is why it's incredibly important as I wade back through this bramble 
I bid farewell to a fantastic tree. Just before I bring the adventure to a close, I just want to say thanks for watching. If you liked it, like the video, make sure you hit subscribe and yeah, make some more content. I also want to again stress how important and how amazing the ATI, the ancient tree inventory is as a resource. This is 10 minutes from my house. So if you're stuck for something to do at the weekend and you want to go out and have a look what's on your doorstep and explore, go and have a look at some of these old ancient and veteran trees because these are amazing natural assets and they're not going to be around forever. They'll probably outlive us. So even better to go and see them while you can. But go and enjoy them. Go and get up close to them. Go and understand them a little bit more and appreciate natural wonders like that that are right on our doorstep.